What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to Wilverley Park, the ancestral home of the Dukes of Hampwick, aka me. Yes, we give ourselves titles on the server. No, I'm not going to go into any more detail with that. So guys, you've always asked me to build my dream house in Minecraft and today I'm going to show you what my dream house would be and that is an entire Georgian country house estate. But anyway, so Wilbley Park is based on the very large Georgian country house known as Trafalgar Park, which is just south of Salisbury. In this video, I'm going to be building not just the main house, but all the buildings that go with an estate. So we've got stables, we've got walled gardens, we've got all sorts going on. So stick around for that. But I thought the best place to start with this would be, of course, the gatehouse. So let's keep the riffraff out and let our dignified guests know we mean business. So onto the gatehouse. So this is a beautiful Palladian styled gatehouse with two big brick flanking walls tie in there to the hedge line that surrounds the entirety of the estate. Now with the gatehouse done it's time to enter on into the parkland and see the rest of the estate for itself. As you may have noticed I've actually landscaped the entirety of this area already so all we got to do is just build the actual buildings on top of it and I think that's a great way to go ahead with this so following up the hill there where the main driveway goes that's where the house will be later on but first we've got to take a detour off here to the right and start building some of the service buildings and that's right we're going to start off with the stables now these stables feature this large circle at the end which is used for running in horses that have been left in their stables for a little bit too long and can't get out onto the parkland but not just that it actually doubles up as a turning circle for the coaches because these are also garages down here as well for coaches and also for the new motor car that now exists because considering I'm building this on my server and for those of you that know the server is set in the year 1912 so cars are now a thing and especially for the Duke of Hampwick who definitely has quite a few motors just lying around. This stable can boast up to 30 horses at once which is great for when the Duke's throwing some parties because then you know everyone can stay overnight and also their horses are also kept somewhere quite nice and dry. Now there are little flats above the stables as well for the groomsmen and the drivers to sleep in so everyone is catered for down here. What I wanted to do was sort of build as many lean-tos and outbuilding structures around here as possible because I thought it was quite a boring looking building as it is just two long lines of brick so making it up to actually be some more buildings around it makes it look a lot nicer. So moving on now from the stables to our next support structure and this is the very large kitchen walled garden. Now you'll find these around all stately homes across the country in England. They are a staple for every house to actually feed their own people and you know a nice place to wander around. So the idea here as I just mentioned is to feed the people. So from here you'll take all the produce into the kitchen up on the house on the hill and actually cook it and use it and it's a great way of doing that because supermarkets weren't a thing back in the uh, 18th and 19th century so this is the only way you could really get fresh food on a regular so what I've done here is it's gone for quite a nice geometric pattern in here with lots of little fields and areas to actually put in some vegetables and some produce but also I've built these really quite nice Victorian glass houses or greenhouses as we call them here in the UK and these are very common across every house again and there's a little style I wanted to try doing myself so if you guys are quite interested in these uh, walled gardens I've got some more later on in the video as well then let me know in the comments below and I can have a go at showing you guys how I built them and also how you would go about building them for any sort of house and any landscape you have sort of ideas for. So we've got the main wall to build on this wall garden next and that is because I wanted to give it a little bit more detail than the rest of the walls around here uh, since it's actually facing where the house will be so that when you're actually inside the house on one of the porches you can look over and see this lovely little walled garden section. Speaking of the main house, it is now time to go get started on that. So we leave behind our walled garden and head up the hill via this little path which will take us in to the actual main driveway. Now first things first, we do need to build the main driveway which is this huge area of paved, well not paved, gravel land that is actually sitting out the front of the main brick structure itself. So this is all based upon, like I said, Trafalgar Park over near Salisbury in the south of England. And when you look at it on Google Maps, you do see this very prominent driveway. So I wanted to bring this into the world as well. Now each side of the driveway that isn't flanked by the house has these decorative walls around them. So it makes it feel more like an enclosed area like a little courtyard but also gives you that nice airy breezy feel to it so without sort of stalling anymore we're on to the main building itself it features this two large wings so we're building the currently building the south wing here and you'll see in a second sort of how much there is in these what i'm doing right now is building the basement of this one and the reason i've started with the basement is because i've got this landscaped hill here that i've managed to dig down into and start building out all of the little rooms in it 
You may be wondering as well, how do you even know what all the rooms look like inside? So I was very fortunate enough to own a couple of books known as Fetivorous Britannicus, which are uh, engineering and architectural books with loads of details and drawings in from the 1750s of a sort of a record of all of the English country homes at the time. There's two volumes, they're a couple of hundred pages long each, and they just have these beautiful sketches and drawings in of all the country houses around here. Now, I was lucky enough to find this house in the book. It wasn't known as Trafalgar Place back then, it was actually known as Standlich House, but it does have the floor plans for the entirety of the basement and the ground floor, so I was able to go in and put in all of the detail. You'll see in a second here, all of the detail I've managed to put in the actual ground floor and the basement section of the main building. Now you may be wondering as well, so Trafalgar, that sounds familiar, yes, there is actually a connection to Nelson and his family here. So the place was bought up in 1813 by the government to be given to the family of Admiral Lord Nelson as a thank you for his battle uh, in Trafalgar and also just, you know, winning pretty much Napoleonic Wars at sea there. Unfortunately, Nelson died after the battle in 1805, so he was never able to live here, but his family and his descendants up until the 1950s lived in this house on this estate. Hence why it's called Trafalgar Park, and I think it's just quite nice. It's still currently a private residence, I believe. There is an owner still there. I don't know if you can go look around. Please don't break in. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. But I do know they do. They were doing some screenings there during 2020, while everything was quite outdoors still, rather than being inside a cinema. So the main house here you're watching is this lovely large structure known as a villa, and these two wings were actually built on at a later date. So I've got the dates written down here as 1766 for the two wings and 1733. For the main body so this building is a good nearly 200 years old and it is still looking fabulous so i've got over onto this other northern side of the wing now in here the basement's actually completely different to the southern side which is why i'm showing it off here i just love the way it sort of mazes about down there you've got different levels different sort of staircases that take you to different rooms i really love it so if you guys want to see a tour around the inside of this place at some point it will sort of push me to do the entirety of the floor plan because again not just have i got the plan for the you know the old plans I've also found some Savills plans which is a a real estate company over here in the UK for when it was listed on the market so I have the entirety of the floor plans so you know I'm actually quite excited to try and get on and build the entirety of the interiors for this but obviously you know me I like to just do the exteriors so we're coming around now onto the garden face and this has a nice central sort of bay that's been taken out from the main wall and on top of that it has this beautiful pediment which just really helps capsulate this view and this is one of my favorite views of it once we get on to the gardens and how about that it's time to start onto these lovely formal gardens so the formal gardens i have based here are again inspired by the ones at trafalgar park but i have made them my own and also i've just made them a lot larger what is quite nice is how they are seated a lot further down the hill so you have to walk down a sort of grassy bank in order to get to the staircase at the bottom. So in the center of this area is a nice big fountain that I've made out of polished diorite to the sort of disgust of most people that come and look at it. No, they actually really like it and I think diorite works really well in this build and that is why I've used it everywhere. All of those white bits you can see are all polished diorite. But I think the reason it works is it offsets that nice spruce color. Uh, the sort of the green and the white go well together. So you can see here as well, we've got these two large reflecting pools that really give some nice views of the house when you're out in the garden. So moving on from the formal garden, there is an oddity that sits at the bottom of the house. You can sort of see it straight from the main house itself as it sits directly opposite the uh, doorway. This is a column. This column is from the original parliament building known as the Palace of Hampwick, which sits over in Whiteburg. Now these are dotted around the entirety of the country, so maybe I'll show you guys some more of these when we get onto that later on in the year. So moving on from the formal gardens, I've got to go and build some more uh, walled gardens again. I've actually fallen in love with building walled gardens, so I wanted to build a couple more smaller ones over here on the southern pinnacle of the estate. So these two are gonna be for fruit and flowers and they'll just sort of provide a bit more fun for the house, another place to go walk around and also just take in the views. What you'll notice is there's a little river over in the corner and that is actually outside of the estate. You can see the hedge line follows around these two buildings here. So this acts as a sort of gatehouse again, so you can walk through here and go to the gate at the end of the walled garden in order to enter the area 
where the river is. Now I was going to build a boathouse but I kind of never got round to it so maybe one day I'll come back here and add a boathouse to this estate but still these wall gardens I think really help use this space up down here because I didn't really know what else to do with it. So that's those two wall gardens done and it's time for us to move on now to the final building of the estate. So this is the chapel or the church and this is actually the oldest building on the estate. It was here before anything else was. It's actually dated back to the Dark Ages, no one knows how old it is, but it has got almost a thousand years worth of dead bodies in the crypt and also in the graveyard. You may be noticing as well, so that's the front door, why is it around the back of the driveway? So in my sort of head cannon here, I've gone with the idea that the original driveway went past the front of the church and actually sort of went through the forest before it got up to the house. Now, the other reason is I built it around the wrong way because I wanted the shaders to get the light on the front of the house. So yeah, that's kind of the headcanon versus why I did what I did. Anyway, all of the Dukes of Hampwick and their families have been buried here for the last 500 years. As with who else has actually lived in the local area, the crypt is bustling with dead bodies. But guys, there is one more thing we must go take care of, and that is a little bit more security down here at the end of this other driveway. Now again, I was going to build another lodge down here, but I sort of fought against it and went, you know what would work? A nice little fence. So we're going to put up this iron fence across here to keep out the riffraff, as I mentioned earlier on, but also to keep you guys out. So please, get off my land and go enjoy a nice cinematic that I've put together for this place, and I'll join you at the end of that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching me build this entire estate. I've got to say I've been planning this for about two months now. Originally this was going to be my uh, 10k special but that sort of went out the window when I passed 10k and then carried on passing those milestones. So that is amazing. So again guys I really want to say a big thank you to you all for sticking around and enjoying the channel, enjoying the content I put out and just you know when you come and join our discord it is great fun just to chat with you guys but still i have actually had so much fun researching building and just living at this house for the last couple of months and it's really really nice to finally see it built you know i landscaped the area on the old server as well ready for this house and that never got actually built either so it was amazing the moment i sat down and built this it was just oh i love it so guys thank you all for watching and remember get inspired get building and i'll see you next time